student has once said, never do today what you can put off till next week. And this is, I'm going to illustrate to you today how this is a terrible advice <laughs> because as college students, I'm sure procrastination is our biggest adversity. And I'm going to talk about how we can, we can be successful in our school careers by, by three ways which will help you stop procrastinating. One of the ways is time management, and the second one is creating a planner, and the third way is by sleeping early and waking up early. So time management is probably the most important aspect of stopping procrastination because um, because there's so little it feels like there's not enough time in our days and whether it may be studying for tests or preparing for quizzes or doing our homeworks we need time management seems to be a big issue and in order to manage our time better we should create a plan and by creating a planner, we will be able, to, once we write out, write down everything we have to do for that day, and for that specific hour of the day, we'll be able to be on top of our schedule and not get in the habit of procrastinating and for this instance, taking it, um, waiting, waiting until the next week to do it. And another important thing is Sleeping early, I mean, sleeping early and waking up early. I, I came to this realization when I was, I got into habit of sleep. Um, I was like a, like a night person. I would always stay up until like 3, 4 a.m. and wake up around noon. But then I realized that, I, that the day felt a lot shorter and I didn't feel productive. I felt groggy. And that's why I decided that with sleeping early and waking up early will help me to manage my time better because there's, there's that morning where you can do all those things. And for, in order to, in order to stop procrastination, you should learn to manage your time better and Create a planner, and finally, to sleep early and wake up early. All right, you need an attention device other than the quote itself, but I thought that you had a very clear statement of what your point of view was and a good preview of what the structure was going to be. It does sound a little bit like uh, you were struggling with the structure at the beginning. Partly that's because of the pacing of the presentation, and it also sounds that way as you're trying to recall each point as you get to it. It feels a little bit like you're out of sync with yourself, and so that needs to be a little bit more natural. The examples that you came up with are good. I'm not exactly sure that there's a difference between the first two points, time management and having a planner. It basically seems like it's all the same idea that you're talking about here. 
what you could use maybe as an example of how you've managed your time and how a planner has helped you use those illustrations and again uh, you missed the whole discussion on the last speaker which I've said to several other people use some examples to illustrate the points that you're talking about don't just uh, state the point as if it is uh, fait accompli. You want to give us something to believe that this is true, some way in which this works. Now, I thought you were a little bit better on the last point when you were talking about going to sleep at a particular time, and you mentioned, look, you know, I get up when I get up at noon, it suddenly feels like the day is all gone. You know, I don't have time to do anything be before it gets dark. That's a little bit more personal, and that's a that's a better example. Uh, I still think you could make it more interesting by telling us some insights that are going on there, for instance, something that you didn't have time to do because you, you know, were in the habit of sleeping until almost noon. I think that would make it a little bit more interesting and personable. So, you know, content-wise, I think you're okay. The structure's okay. Uh, like I said, the content could be a little stronger, but it was it fit with what you were talking about. Presentation, um, I think your voice projects pretty well. Uh, you know, the pacing is a little bit awkward. It, that's the place where I think there's some nervousness that's coming out and uncertainty as to where you're going next. Uh, at the very end of the speech, for instance, the reason it doesn't sound like you were finished or if you, that you even know if you're finished is because of the way you've paced the presentation. It's, it's not that you don't have a, a, an exit line or even a summary, but it's the way it's being delivered. It just, and I guess that's, well, what we've got, you know, that kind of thing. And, and, you're, and you're stretching it out instead of making a definitive statement. And I think if you could work a little bit on your pacing, it'll sound even better. Uh, your eye contact, you, you do look up, but I don't think, uh, I also think you're looking down quite a bit, kind of scanning in front of the audience rather than talking to the audience. Your facial expressions, I think you need to be a little bit more animated. Uh, maybe that's where some anxiety is coming out also. Uh, your face expressions are not blank, but they aren't really very vivid. And to pull the audience in, sometimes you've got to give yourself a little bit more personality and force yourself to remember, well, you know, this is a, a sad thing that I'm talking about, or this is a funny illustration that I've got here, or here's something that I really want people to take seriously, and you got to make a little bit of extra effort to you know, slather on some mustard there so that it tastes good as it's going down. And that's you know, what a smile can do or what a frown can do. It can just make it you know, a little bit more appealing to the audience. All right, thank you very much. We do have a few more speakers to hear. We'll um, start with the speakers on Thursday so that the last half of class can be about the test. And those of you who didn't hear, the test is chapters 6 through 10.